are just a stone's throw away from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as we get set for football at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. This was the scene a few minutes ago. The dog pound in full roar as their Browns emerge from their tunnel. And they're ready to go as they get set to match up. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line with the New York Jets. On first down, it's Taylor. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. The Jets and Browns, two cellar dwellers from a year ago, and they did meet in that season, week five, in Cleveland. Miles Garrett, it was his NFL debut. He got two sacks, but it was former Brown Josh McCown throwing two second-half touchdown passes to lead the Jets to the victory. And every time I hear about the Jets and Browns playing, you know what I think about? The first ever Monday night football game. The Jets at the Browns. Cleveland won. I believe it was 1970. It was indeed. I just happen to have the note here. I don't know this off the top of my head, but September 21st, 1970. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. A good play there as the Browns strike for 16 and a first down. First carry for a former 49er and also a former Buckeye. It's Carlos Hyde. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And Brandon, every running back wants to use their speed in order to get out in front of things. Sometimes you just have to be patient, let blocks develop. On that play, that didn't happen. Second down, Hyde. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. the gun it's Taylor he's got his tight end in Joku and he's taken down but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40 and a nice gain of 21 yards I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective what's that that's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball he broke the first tackle luckily enough there were more people there to get him down They'll run for the first time with Johnson. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Back to the ground. This time it's high. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and they'll be faced with a third and inches. That's his longest run of the first quarter. And Charles, we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game. They'll be looking for more of that. And they got to the perimeter. So that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today. So they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside. But it appears that when they want the big yardage, they think they can get to the outside and make it happen. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. If you make the stop there, maybe you hold them to three on this opening drive. They didn't get the stop. Yeah, new set of downs now. Now you're worried about, just as you pointed out, not just giving up three, possibly giving up six. Let's see what they decide to do here because they've got to change up what they have been doing. It hasn't been working. First down, a run with high. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. 
Now they'll throw with Taylor. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Pressure, and that's certainly going to be a key to this game going forward. And that time, they were able to get in there and influence the throw. And remember, quarterbacks got to get rid of it. They don't have the tucker roll that they can fall back on anymore. It's been a pretty long opening drive. This will be play number 11 coming up on third down. From the gun, it's Taylor. Nowhere to get away, and down he goes. Taylor is sacked. Jordan Jenkins able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play, and it'll be fourth down. Zane Gonzalez now to try the Browns' field goal. On the right hash, officially, this will be a 51-yard attempt. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good, and this will remain a scoreless game. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. And because they couldn't hit the long field goal, they are set up nicely offensively at the 41, first and 10. All right, here we go. Ah! Now a first carry for the former Cleveland Brown, Isaiah Crowell. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Here we go now. Green. Now a run. This is below power. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Brought down that time by Christian Kirksey. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short game. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Faking the give, Darnold. And he's got a new one. Give him 12 yards there, and the Jets have a first. And a key number on that play, three. Third play of the drive, third down, spectacular catch, turns into a first down. First down saves him from a three and out. Here we go now. Darnold on first down. And the connection made to Terrell Pryor. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Sometimes it seems like a tough world out there. Many thought Sam Darnold would go number one overall to the Browns, and he fell to number three to the New York Jets. Heike fell to a great situation. He gets to go to New York with a rebuilding team, take over the job right then and there. And while many were expecting Broadway Baker Mayfield, Instead, they got sudden Sam Darnold, and I think the Jets fans are going to be very happy to have him. Emmanuel Agba there on the stop. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is, and really a lot of the time they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance, they're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold him to no gain. Here's Darnold. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Robbie Anderson, the man he was looking for, and it's third down. He's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw at any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. The shotgun snap for Donald. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. Yeah. 
And Myers able to knock it through. And the Jets hit the board first. It's 3-0. So the opening drive stalls out, but the field goal does get them the first points of the night. And three points not to be underestimated. How about this, right? You're on the road. You're under the lights. National television audience. This is not a dress rehearsal, partner. This is for real. And a pretty nice opening statement. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Here comes the Browns' offense back onto the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus-yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, a little closer. Yeah, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Dancing to his left. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Avery Williamson able to drop him for a loss of a couple. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. Now, following the sack, they'll come up here on a second down and 12. Here's Taylor. Screenplay, Johnson. They get seven there on the screen. It'll set up a third down. I wonder what was going through his mind when he got the play call. He just got sacked on the previous play. He knows they're coming after him again. A little bit of guts to stand in there, take the hit, and successfully complete the screen pass. Really well done. The Browns on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and five. Now Taylor. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 14 yards, and it's a Cleveland first down. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. A couple of recent pickups. Taylor finding Landry for the Cleveland first down. Taylor will lead up the offense first and 10, and he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Throwing again, it's Taylor. To the right side and complete to Njoku. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Back with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two. They're looking at a second and short yardage to start things out. And off comes to Hyde. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. Only a yard on the pickup, so from a good situation on second and two, it's now third and one. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. This is third and one, very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. 
They stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. And this won't get there. Won't be online either. It's no good. Off to the right. And this score will stay right where it is. So two missed field goals for him now, and that's helped keep them with a big zero on the scoreboard. Well, it's not the only reason they have a zero. The offense has been bogged down a few times now, but it's certainly not helping the cause any at all. Two sides to every coin. This is the bad side of missing the 58-yarder. Now they start at the 48. On first down, it's Darnold. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was looking for Quincy Anunwa that time, and it's second down. Well, quite a few teams this past week in the NFL were playing with new quarterbacks, guys that have been in the league but in a new uniform. And they had quite a bit of success. You noted some of them. Who'd you have down? It's really incredible success when you think about it. Kirk Cousins in Minnesota won. Case Keenum in Denver won. Alex Smith with Washington won at Arizona. Pat Mahomes. He started one game last year. It was really a throwaway. His true debut on the road against the Chargers wins. And Tyrod, Tyrod, whichever way he wants it pronounced, got a tie with Cleveland. How about a special category? Brian Tannehill back with the Dolphins. He wins in their home game against Tennessee. And fear the beard. Ryan Fitzpatrick with a monster performance on the road beating New Orleans with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And if you guys were worried, Brady and Rodgers still pretty good. Go. Yes. Throwing here on third down, Darnold. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And this will be caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. Robbie Anderson, 52 yards. And the Jets find a way to stretch their lead. Well, there was a little extra pressure with that one because it was third down. He didn't care. He snagged it with one hand like it was routine. The key is to make a play in a tough situation. Doesn't matter how. And in this case, one-handed gets it done. Terrific play for us to watch. Extra point up and through by Myers. And the lead grows to 10-0. Here's Myers now to kick it away. On the return, Jabril Peppers. And now running right, and he's into the clear. The 40, the 20, 10, and all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. As his guys are in for six, and the Browns are back with it a score. I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos that their players can't keep up with. And they say, challenge it, kick it to it. The way he runs as fast as he is, I wouldn't challenge him at all. I'd do everything possible to keep it away. He is just a blur when he gets a full head of steam and he got a full head of steam there. So let's try this again. After the kick return TD, here's yet another kickoff. Andre Roberts now to return it. And he will be marked out right there at the 20-yard line. The New York set to take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Ah! 
They begin with a run by Corral. And the window closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. On second down, here's Crowell. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. The Jets on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and six. Darnold from the gun. He's got Curse. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. His first catch, good for nine and a first down. Well, you think he loved the protection he had there all kinds of time. And you're so right. How could you not love that? Great protection. The big guys up front really locked in on it. No one gets near the quarterback. He's got all the time in the world to survey the field and deliver for a first down. And the big boys up front, a big reason why they're also winning, too. It's caught on the left side by Kurz. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. They give him a gain of 38. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Set! Green! Set! Off of play action, Darnold. They'll roll him out right. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. Doesn't look to be any confusion here as they come up now on a second and six following the delay of game. Now let's go. Ah! Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold. But well, has got it, complete. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. Third and two, Darnold. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Larry Ogunjobi in there to drop him for a four-yard loss, and it'll be fourth down. They've been moving the ball well offensively, really getting into a groove. Last play, pass completion. Now, finally, the defense gets there. And you have to find a way to disrupt their rhythm. Do you do it with coverage, or do you do it with pressure? They elected to go with pressure, and it was the right call. And Myers able to knock it through. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. 
And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? It's complete on the bubble screen. That's Gordon. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. The loss of three on that first down pass play, now second and 13. Now Taylor. And that's incomplete. Johnson, the intended target, third down here. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. The Browns on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is going to be third and 13. From the shotgun, it's Taylor. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And he can't quite intercept it. Zone coverage, free safety was there. Couldn't come up with it, and now it's fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And the Jets will take over first and 10. The Jets offense now works their way back onto the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. The game. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns three yards on the pickup there and it'll be second down when we see those runs to the perimeter when we see those runs to the edge we think about big breakers don't we in this case it was a modest gain but it does open up possibilities here on second down play action it's Darnold it's a short one here complete to the tight end and to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. From the gun on third down, here's Darnold. He's got his man. It's Kurz. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. He's up over 50 yards receiving now in this first half. It's a first down. Let's go. They go play action here on first down. That one's complete to Tomlinson. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. <laughs> Darnold to throw again. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll get it down here to the 43. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense. And guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. 
But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle. You put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. This quarterback now, 13 of 16 throwing the football. It's first and 10. Again, Darnold. Got an open man. It's a noon one. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. to the air again, Donald. And he completed seven straight passes before that one. As it falls incomplete and puts a halt to that streak. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Here's Darnold. Found his target. It's Anderson. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you'd better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. Yeah, when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through. Throwing again is Donald. Toward the pylon, caught. And on third and inches, we're going to get a whistle and a timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. The Jets on third down. They've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. This is third and goal. All right, here we go. Blue landing. Blue landing. They'll run. This is Powell. Fighting his way in for a Jets touchdown. Bilal Powell taking it in. And the Jets are going to add on to their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and tear it into the second half.
Here's Myers now to kick it away. To return, it's Peppers. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. And this is caught by Fells, right side. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. And now the Browns coming out on the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. Now Taylor to throw. Now they set up the screen, that's complete. Now the Jets are gonna burn another timeout as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. The Browns on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and 15. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. As the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Britton Colquitt now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Pulled in at the 24. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And the Jets set to take the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Darnold on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. He got 29 yards that time. And he spikes it to stop the clock. And now if they choose, they'll have a chance at maybe a long field goal try here just before the break. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash, this from 53. And Myers able to knock it through. So we've reached halftime with the visiting Jets on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Roberts on the return. Here's the Jet offense now. They head out to take over. This is sort of what you would call the put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because 
What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. And while that play was unsuccessful to start the second half, I'm not sure that you just totally abandon what you do running the football. Maybe you make some adjustments in your run game and do things a little bit differently, but that doesn't necessarily mean you just go to the pass and do nothing else. Now let's go! Green! Ah! To throw on second down is Darnold. And this is caught by Curse. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. The Jets on third down. Can't fault these numbers. Seven for nine thus far. This is third and ten. Here we go now. 319. 319. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. After the delay, they're backed up even further for third and long. The shotgun snap for Darnold. Dumps off to Powell. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Call it a gain of five, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. A 47-yard punt, maybe a couple on the return, and the Browns will take over first and 10. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. It'll be a gain of nine, and it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. Well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center eligible stuff, but still a lot of guys to account for. They'll give to Hyde. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe you change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. They run again with Hyde on first. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. On second down, Johnson. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. And he gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Escaping the pressure right, and he'll get up to the 43 yard line. He opted to go with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's fourth. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps, 
And on that play, they held him to a short gain. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. And New York set to take the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Hey, here we go, here. On first down, it's Darnold. And he's got his man on the out route. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Hurry up, here we go. Ah! A first down carry now for Crowell. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Now let's go! They'll run it now out of the gun. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give them a new set of downs. Well, we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. There we go now. The first down throw, Darnold. To the sideline, wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. To give him a couple on the catch, it's second and eight. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. All right, here we go. Ah! Here's Darnold now on second down. Hauled in by Anderson, left side. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. This quarterback now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. All right, here we go. Ah! They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Now let's go! They keep it on the ground. This time it's Corral. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. It's the pro bowler Jamie Collins that makes the stop. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Throwing here on third down, Darnold. Letting one go deep for a noon walk. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. But that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice, getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. Here's Lachlan Edwards now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And the Browns getting set to go. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. 
Now Taylor on first down. To the right side, and he's got Landry complete. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Attempt carry for Hyde. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there. Second down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Now Taylor to throw on second down. And he's got the hook up to Landry. The reception good for seven. It's third down. The Browns on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This time it's third and three. the gun it's Taylor he's got his tight end in Joku and he'll be taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory Taylor able to find his big tight end in Joku for the Cleveland first down and Brandon from our time in college football where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree one thing they did learn find open areas find soft spots and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. That's going to set him back five yards. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to loft one deep left side here. This is intercepted. Marcus May with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, when someone other than the quarterback is throwing the football, it's either beautiful or a disaster, and here it was the latter. Nowhere in between, right? I <laughs> think you're exactly right. It takes a fortitude to call that type of a play, but when it doesn't work, Oh, boy, you wish you hadn't. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. They'll run it again with Crowell. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that's going to make it third down and ten. Hurry up, here we go. Three, nine, and we're back now here Three, in nine, Cleveland. Nine, it's Jet football as they've got the lead here, and we get set to begin quarter number four. The Jets on third down. Well, they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This is third and ten. Here's again to Crowell. And able to get a little more breathing room out to the five-yard line. Four yards on the pick up there, but it's going to take him to fourth down. 
we often talk of situational football. Let's just call it team football. The defense did their job, got off the field, brought the punting situation, so they're turning the ball back over to their offense. You think those guys would get along very well right now? Of course they will. Defense helped the offense. Now it's their turn to take it downfield. Well, that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And possession will switch hands first and 10. The Browns offense trotting back on the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still on attack. We'll see how they attack them here. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Decent start there to the drive. Big hill to climb, needing two touchdowns, also a two two-point conversion. So, partner, how do you eat an elephant? I don't eat an elephant who eats elephant. <laughs> but if you do, you do it one bite at a time. Okay. That's the way they've got to play this, one okay. play at a time. Yes, there's urgency, but they have to be careful as well. Right. Let's go with like a 50-ounce ribeye. Oh, one, one bite at a time. All right, I'm with you. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it, or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Taylor incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. To throw is Taylor. To throw again. Gets it to Gordon. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. Taylor now a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and ten. Ready, flag, <laughs> now high. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Eleven more on that one and another first down. Well, so much for him being bottled up throughout the day. Finally finds a way to break through and get a really nice gain. The defense had felt great about what they had going. Now they've got to turn their attention to getting it back in that direction. Can they bottle him up again? Because I'd say after that run, confidence is pretty high for him. They'll run high. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. This linebacking core, they've done a good job of keeping that running game in check, haven't they? They certainly have, and what they'll also do when this game is over is thank the guys up front, the big defensive line, because they've kept them clean, so to speak, not letting blockers get to them, allowing them to run to the football and keep that running game bottled up. They'll give it to him up the middle. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Oh, partner, that play brought back memories. Watching them string it out, letting the runner get all the way to the sideline area, but not letting him get out of bounds. They formed that picket fence and didn't allow him through. Not only that, got him for a loss as well here. And one of the reasons they lead in the fourth quarter, plays like that. Yeah, took a little more time off the clock, making him do it that way, didn't they? And that is incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the leg's still there. This has been a tough game. Zane Gonzalez now to try the Browns field goal. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And Gonzalez puts this one through. And that will cut the lead down to 13. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field.
After the field goal, here's Gonzalez to kick it off. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The New York set to take the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. On first and 10, Darnold. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Now a handoff to Crowell. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. So that'll back him up five. convert there on third down but what an effort to get his hand on that one knock it away and brings up a fourth down decision here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight this is taken at the 18 that'll be a 49 yard punt six yards there on the return and out will come the offense as they take over Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point? The kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> bash. I don't know about that. Bash, <laughs> Super tall. <laughs> Meanwhile, a throw by Taylor is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Taylor incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. Hey, ready. Back. <laughs> Taylor now going to throw again. Throwing over the middle it's incomplete. Josh Gordon, the intended receiver, and it'll bring up third down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback, but when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. From the gun, it's Taylor. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Here's Britton Colquitt now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. They'll look to set up his blockers. So a change of possession here on the punt. 
And New York set to take the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10. Now it's Corral. And he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 12 yards there, and the Jets have a first. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. As he's got this down inside the 40 to the 39. Eight yards on the run there, and that leaves them with third and just a couple. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Let's go! Third and two, Darnold. Yeah, it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Let's go! On first down, Darnold. Well, Noodle's got it. Complete. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. All right, here we go. Ah! Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold. Got an open man, it's a noon one. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Hey. Hey. Here we go now. Ah! Darnold from the red zone now. Oh, it's a screen pass, that's complete. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Only three there on the screen at second down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. Here we go now. Darnold to throw again. His throw's gonna be incomplete. 
So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. To the air again, Donald throwing for his line back, and he's got him complete. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. It'll be a pickup of just two, and that'll bring up fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, Look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. To return, it's Peppers. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Browns offense heading back out to take possession. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. On first and 10, it's Taylor. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Taylor incomplete on first down. Here's second and 10. Now Taylor throwing again. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. That catch good for five. It's third down. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. From the gun on third down, it's Taylor. He rifles one that's intercepted. Darren Lee picks it, and his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Charles, when plays like that work, it's a thing to behold, but sometimes we see why they're very deep in the playbook. And how many times have we been at practice and heard all the other guys chirping about, you know, I used to play quarterback in high school. I can do this until it becomes a game situation. Not quite the same in many cases. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and it'll be second and 12. Faking the give, Darnold. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Well, a clear running situation. Try to take time off the clock. You ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit them over the top. Darnold from the gun. Powell on the catch. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. That's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. So following the holding call, what can they do here on third and long? Hey, 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 hey. Here we go now. Green, 39. Green. 
A shotgun snap for Darnold. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. So on is Jason Myers. He's hit from as long as 58 in his career. This to make it a three-score game late. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. For the Browns, good starting field position as they have it first and ten. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Over the middle complete. It's Gordon. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. First down, it's Taylor. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. And now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Throwing now, Taylor on first down. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Taylor incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. Throwing again. Taylor jumping it off for Johnson. He takes this to the 15. A flashy juke. That got him a couple extra yards. It'll be a gain of six, and that'll lead here to a third down. Taylor will throw again. This is Johnson. He's got it. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. To throw is Taylor. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Good positioning, and it's picked off. He was looking for Landry that time. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. And now the Browns are going to take another timeout as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game.
Instead of running, Darnold's going to throw this thing. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. Emmanuel Agba in there to get him for a loss of 5. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. On third down, Corral. And he'll be taken down, losing yardage back at the nine-yard line. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say good night from Cleveland.